Directors now really call the shots. So far, so good. If a director has great ideas, original ideas, uh, creative ideas, a director can really improve or bring closer to the audience what uh, the creative genius of the composer and the librettist put together. But when a semi-talented or untalented individual who ends up in a directorial position tries to superimpose his ideas, his concept, and his interpretation over or contrary to the intention of the librettist, the intentions of the composer, and goes against the visual image that inspired that composer to create that music, then the performance and to me, certainly, the illusion is destroyed. When we have the opening scene, the opening music of, of uh, the Nile scene in Aida, you can hear the, the crickets, you can see practically the palm swaying, the, the lotus flowers. It is in the music. If you have a stark stage with a monolithic temple to the side and absolutely nothing else. You are left to your imagination. Your imagination may be very fine. Some people in the audience can imagine more or less, or you can close your eyes. But a theater theatrical experience is not something where you want to sit and close your eyes. You go to a performance that lasts two, three, four hours, you are staring at something. You have one of your uh, faculties, your, your ability to see, engaged for the duration of the time. If it is boring, if it is annoying, if it is disgusting, then certainly you are not getting out of it, again, what the composer intended. If you have a low and green set in a junkyard, you don't get the sublime music, the, the effect that, that sublime music creates for you as the swan approaches on the river Scheldt. Granted, modern audiences may find it slightly uh, ridiculous if it's not done well, that you have a knight arriving on a boat drawn by a, a swan, but that's in the music. If there ever was in literature or in opera, a knight in shining armor that is certainly Lohengrin, who is to arrive dressed from head to toe in silver, with a silver shield and a silver sword and a silver horn, and step ashore. Uh, the, the music, the, it is so bright, it is all in the sound. When the swan chorus starts slowly, and schwan, and schwan, and then it goes into that total crescendo. That, that to have a Lohengrin, a raggedy Lohengrin, come into a junkyard, or as uh, at the Metropolitan, they had, I think it's Robert Wilson's uh, directing, Lohengrin walk on stage from head to toe dressed in a black tunic. I mean, where is the image? That is not what Wagner was inspired by when he, he conceived that picture. We have many... Uh, records, written records, of Wagner's stage directions, down to the last detail. We have uh, an account when he was teaching Meistersinger to the cast in Munich, München. And every little detail he was showing them how to do, how to move, where to stand, what, what he had in mind to do. We have uh, the written record of Verdi showing to that, that dumb klotz, Francesco Tamagno, in Otello, how to die and how to fall, and everybody was worried that the old man is going to kill himself. But, but he had something in his mind. Now, if the director takes that piece of truly uh, work of genius, either Verdi, Wagner, you name it, fill in again, fill in the blanks, as I keep saying, uh, if you change what they intended, well, then why not change the music too? 
Why not change the text too? I mean, you know, you can change it in anything. And as I started to say several sentences ago, when a creative director improves or tries to bring closer to the audience a, a piece, it is all fine and well. When the director works against it, like there is a director active in England who says, whatever the stage direction is, I do the opposite. Why does it help? Why does it help if they move a, a period piece from a certain period of 15, 18, 16th century to modern times? Why does it help? I have recently seen an Otello which take pla takes place in a yacht harbor with uh, 20th century uniforms. And of course, the text doesn't go with it. And the acting is ridiculous. I have seen a, a video of the production of Lucia de Lammermoor at the Châtelet in Paris, where uh, the Wolfskrag scene takes place on wire scaffoldings. And Lucia, poor June uh, Anderson, sings the whole mad scene climbing up and down on a giant ladder standing in the middle of the stage. Now, granted, you have to be really mad to do that, so I guess maybe the director wanted to show us that this Lucia was mad enough to climb up a ladder. Her singing was just stunning, but it made absolutely no sense. We are dealing with a, a bride who went insane because of the forced marriage and killed her bridegroom, her husband, on the wedding night and goes crazy and finally falls dead. Why do we have to have this done on a ladder? What does it improve? By contrast, I would like to mention a very fine director, Frank Orsaro, who's, who gave excellent stagings at the New York City Opera. Uh, stands out in my mind, well, I've seen uh, his Butterfly, which was stupendous. I saw his Traviata, which was stupendous. But his Faust was totally, totally rethought without really departing from the spirit of the piece. It had many, many, many fine, fine details. If anybody cares to explore this, Corsaro published his autobiography by the title Maverick. And uh, at the end of this volume, he appended these four operas that he directed, a detailed description of what's happening on stage. So without the aid of any visuals, you can more or less get a grasp, an idea of what he was trying to do. But in this Faust, for instance, in the opening scene, Faust's study has a corpse under a white sheet on a slab table. And when, when he's starting his role, he starts singing. No, before uh, the text starts, during the prelude, the curtain is up, there is a knock on the door, two people bring in another corpse, and they put it on another table, and when Faust starts to examine the corpse, that's when he starts singing Rien. There is nothing I know. All my knowledge is limited. In, uh, no matter how long I search in heaven and earth for, for knowledge, I don't know anything. And the scene goes on, but when he invokes Satan, we hear a voice, the me voici. You don't know where the voice comes from. And then the corpse sits up on the slab table, throws off uh, the white sheet and we have Mephistopheles. Now, is this better or worse than popping out of the, the fireplace with a big flame? You are to decide, but it's very effective and does not violate the spirit of Faust searching for knowledge and having Mephisto appear to him. <laughs>